linear systems and matrix pseudo inverse. Before we plunge in, uh, here are the expressions for derivatives, vector derivatives of uh, different terms that we shall use. So the derivative, vector derivative or gradient of a constant is a zero vector. The vector derivative of a linear term del p transpose x, where p is a constant vector, uh, which is equal to derivative of x transpose p equals p. For a quadratic term, del x transpose qx equals q plus q transpose x. Now, when q is symmetric, q transpose equals q, whence this expression reduces to del x transpose qx equals twice qx. And del square of x transpose qx, uh, that's the Hessian, equals 2q. A quick preview of what this uh, lecture is all about. So we shall be considering uh, expressions of this form, ax equals b, and we would like to find x, where a is a m by n matrix, and x and b are n and m dimensional vectors. x is the variable and we want to solve for x. The solution is of the form x equals a plus b, a pseudo inverse b, where pseudo inverse of a has uh, dimensions uh, n by m, so it's of the same uh, dimension as a transpose. Now we'll be looking at two specific cases where m is greater than n, so that a is a tall matrix, and the pseudo inverse in that case is given by this expression here, a plus equals a transpose a inverse a transpose. On the other hand, when m is less than n, then the pseudo inverse has a different expression. It's given by this a transpose times a a transpose inverse and we shall look at all the details next. First we consider overdetermined systems. So we have m equations and n variables where m is greater than n. x1, x2 until xn these are the n variables here and we have m equations. This each row here, this is the first row, second row, and this is the mth row. These are all different equations, so we have m equations to solve. And the ith row is given by ai1x1 plus ai2x2 dot 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 until aixn equals bi or summation j aijxj equals bi. Now we have more equations to solve than the number of variables. Hence, we cannot find an exact uh, solution in terms of the x's so that all the left hand sides match with the right hand sides here. So we will instead try to find the best approximate solution. So this is the coefficients I've arranged them in the form of a matrix and all the scalar variables now are uh, another vector x and uh, all the constant terms on the right side uh, are another vector b. And since we are trying to get an approximate solution, I've replaced the equality here with an approximation. So we are trying to get the best possible solution for x so that the left hand side and the right hand side match as closely as possible. Graphically, this is what it looks like. Now, we will always assume that um, the matrix of coefficients here is always full rank. So in this case, it will be equal to the uh, full column rank n. And this is the ith row uh, here uh, obtained by taking these coefficients of the matrix A multiplying with, with vector x 
and equal that's approximately equal to bi we want to make the left side be as close to the right side as possible so this is what we want to do summation aij xj must be e approximately equal to bi and this is only for the ith row but we want to simultaneously do the same thing for all the rows so let's define the error ri as the difference between them bi minus summation aij xj is ri and uh, that's only for the ith row here uh, since we have m rows, we get this vector r of errors. This error vector r can be expressed as b minus ax. We want to make r as small as possible. So we define our objective function phi of x equals summation of ri squared because ri can be positive or negative or phi of x equals r transpose r so this r transpose r is what we want to minimize so phi of x is r transpose r but since r equals v minus a x phi x equals b minus a x transpose times b minus ax and then i open up the parenthesis i get b transpose b negative um, ax transpose b which is x transpose a transpose b then b transpose uh, negative ax and then uh, negative negative which is positive ax transpose ax which is x transpose a transpose ax now each term is a scalar now look at the third term here it's a scalar and the scalar is equal to its own transposed so if we can replace this with its transpose it will make no difference but its transpose b transpose ax transposed is actually the second term x transpose a transpose b whence phi of x is b transpose b minus twice x transpose a transpose b plus x transpose a transpose a x this is the quadratic term and uh, it can always be um, seen very easily that a transpose a is always a symmetric matrix so let's take the derivative derivative of phi x equals negative this is the constant term so it vanishes a derivative of a constant is zero so negative twice a transpose b plus since this is a symmetric matrix so we have twice a transpose a x and the second derivative um, will be twice a transpose a and it can always be shown that uh, a transpose a is uh, positive definite so this second derivative is a positive definite matrix we want to minimize phi of x now at the minimum the derivative of phi of x should be zero and the second derivative should be positive definite but we have seen that the second derivative is positive definite so all we have to do is uh, let the first derivative del phi of x be equal to zero and we denote the solution as x star. So del phi of x star equals zero. But phi del phi of x is given by this expression. So we have a transpose a x equals a transpose b by setting this equal to zero. Whence x star equals a transpose a inverse a transpose b. So this is our solution. Our solution is this. X star is A pseudo inverse B, where pseudo inverse of A is given by this expression here. A transpose A inverse A transpose. And this 
matrix A transpose A is invertible because it's a n by n matrix, so it's a full rank matrix. And the pseudo inverse A plus is such that pseudo inverse of A times A equals I. But A times A pseudo inverse is not equal to I. In fact, A times A pseudo inverse will be a m by m large matrix and it won't be full rank so it can never be equal to the identity matrix next we go to underdetermined systems as before uh, for underdetermined systems we have uh, m equations each of these rows is an equation and we have n variables x1 through xn but m is less than n. That's why it's called an underdetermined system. And the ith row, as before, is a summation uh, j, aij, xj equals bi. Now, since m is less than m, we have less equations to satisfy than the number of variables uh, available to us, x1 through xn. Hence, we have multiple solutions. So our goal is to select the solution which minimizes something. I can arrange all the coefficients A11 through AMN in the form of a matrix and all the scalar variables as a vector, a single vector variable, and all the constants on the right side as another vector. This is what it looks like. And I'll assume that A is of uh, full, uh, full row rank this time, M. So this is what we line up with. We want to solve AX equals B. And since we have to find something to minimize, we choose to minimize summation XJ squared, which is uh, X transpose X, which is also equal to the L2 normed um, L2 norm of x squared. So this is the objective function that we want to minimize and um, ax equals b must be satisfied. In other words, our solution x star equals arg min uh, with respect to x of um, the L2 norm of x squared where uh, ax equals b. This gives rise to the following constraint optimization problem. Minimize I choose half arbitrarily, uh, half of summation xj squared subject to summation j aij xj minus bi equals zero. And this is for every row i. So the Lagrangian of uh, this constraint optimization problem is lx mu equals the objective function uh, plus uh, summation over all the constraints, uh, each row i is a constraint, so summation uh, over i of mu i, I introduce mu i's as uh, Lagrange multipliers or, or uh, dual variables, uh, mu i times the constraint, summation aij xj minus bi. And the mu i's can be arranged as another m-dimensional vector mu. The vector is uh, the dual vector or the Lagrange multiplier. In vector matrix form, this is the constraint optimization problem. Minimize half x transpose x subject to ax equals b. And the Lagrangian is half x transpose x plus mu transpose ax minus b. The derivative of the Lagrangian is x plus a transpose mu and the second derivative is equal to i, the identity matrix. Now, we want to find the constraint minimum of this problem and we know that these are the conditions that must be satisfied at the constraint uh, minimum. The derivative del of uh, L must be equal to zero. The constraint Ax equals b has to be satisfied at the minimum and 
the second derivative of L has to be positive definite. Now, here, the second derivative is equal to the identity matrix, and we know that that's positive definite. So this condition here for the constrained minimum is already satisfied. And so we can ignore that constraint. Now, coming back here, uh, the first derivative has to be equal to zero. Let x star mu star be the saddle point at the constrained minimum. So the derivative um, of the Lagrangian has to be equal to zero uh, at x star mu star. Whence we get x star plus a transpose mu star equals zero, or x star equals negative a transpose mu star. And so we have taken care of this first derivative of the Lagrangian being equal to zero. Now, since the first derivative was already equated to zero, we can ignore this condition for the minimum. Now we have to take care of this second condition here, Ax equals b. So Ax star must be equal to b. But x star is equal to negative a transpose mu star. Whence, replacing x star with this value here, I get a negative a a transpose mu star equals b. Whence, mu star equals negative a a transpose inverse b. And a a transpose is a small sized uh, matrix, uh, m by m, and so it's invertible. So, mu star is given by this expression. Whence, since we know x star equals negative a transpose mu star, we get x star equals uh, a transpose using this value, a transpose times a a transpose inverse b. So, this is the final solution that we get x star equals this expression here. So for the underdetermined system, we have x star equals a pseudo inverse times b, where a pseudo inverse a plus is equal to a transpose times a a transpose inverse. And it can be verified that a times a pseudo inverse equals the identity matrix, but A pseudo inverse times A will be equal to a uh, n by n uh, singular matrix, which cannot be inverted, so it cannot be equal to the identity matrix. In the overdetermined system, we were trying to minimize the squared error. Um, uh, we formulated the objective function v of x accordingly, and we tried to um, uh, find the uh, solution x that minimizes that. And that was uh, pretty straightforward. But in case of underdetermined systems, why did we choose to minimize uh, the L2 norm of x squared, which is x transpose x? So what's the rationale behind that? This is uh, explained below. So in the absence of any prior knowledge about the distribution of x, we assume that x follows a Gaussian distribution with zero mean and uh, covariance equal to the identity matrix. So this is the prior probability distribution of x. And so probability of x is given by this expression here. And uh, if we take the log of the probability, we get negative half x transpose x negative n over 2 log 2 pi. Now x star, our solution would be the one which is most likely, which has the highest value of the probability subject to ax equals b. We could formulate our problem in this manner. But instead of maximizing the probability, we simply choose to maximize the log probability here. And so this is what we could do. Now plugging in the value of the log probability, this is 
what the um, our objective boils down to. This is what we want to do. And we can ignore this constant term. It doesn't contain x. So we are left with argmax of x with respect to x of negative half x transpose x subject to ax equals b. Now we can drop the half here. And so argmax of negative x transpose x. And we can again drop the negative here. And the max becomes a min. So we are left with argmin x transpose x subject to ax equals b. So this is what drove us to minimize x transpose x.